If you got the DualSense Edge, you were definitely looking for a professional PS5 controller. And there comes the most crucial function, wireless input delay versus USB cable. But first, what is input lag? It's the time that it takes when you press a button until it registers in the game. For example, how long does it take to press R2 until the weapon starts shooting in the game? We calculate that in milliseconds. Every one second is 1000 milliseconds. So for this test, I connected the controller to the PS5 with Bluetooth and the PC with the USB cable simultaneously. This way I could monitor input lag and button presses and record it with my Elgato capture card to make the test. I considered the capture card delay which is around 7 milliseconds, USB delay to PC which was around 0.5 milliseconds and encoding delay on OBS which is 2.5 milliseconds. I will add or remove some of them when calculating the final results. Why does it even matter? Because the faster your controller responds there will be less delay and you can become much faster especially in shooter games as i tested that the difference was around four frames and if we do a little math it's around 33.3 milliseconds considering 9.5 milliseconds capture delay plus encoding lag 0.5 milliseconds controller input lag to pc we should add 9 milliseconds to 33.3 which is 42.3 milliseconds delay with bluetooth it's almost the same as normal dual sense with no improvements but the delay with cable is around 0.5 milliseconds which is much faster looking for less delay use the usb cable but let the battery be used once in a while so you will need to recharge it and the cells won't die maybe in offline games is a good choice next up trigger length button versus trigger dead zone so you can limit the trigger length while getting the total input with the back buttons on the controller we have the same option in the console settings as trigger dead zone what's the difference and how could it be helpful as you know l2 and r2 buttons have pressure in intensity usually when you push them you can go from 0 to 100 or 250 whatever range we consider when you limit the zone you may think okay if i can go only this much it means i'm on 30 percent or something right no you actually get the entire 100 percent zone but in a less length that's why it's a length limiter not a zone limiter you get full range of 0 to 255 in much less length and from there it's almost like physically don't try to push it or you'll break it now what about trigger dead zone in the console settings there are two differences here first you can add dead zone to input for example if i change from to 30 for this range you won't get any response meaning your zero actually starts from here and 255 would be here you have the full range but the start will be different it's helpful if you have dead zone issues or a game has a threshold that I will discuss in other videos. But if you change 2 which is the end, it acts like the zone limiter on the controller. Let's say I change it to 50. Now I get 0 from here and 255 will finish here. Again you limit the length and not having a dead zone of the range. The difference is with software changes in settings here, your button isn't locked anymore. You can push it all the way down because it's just a software limitation and doesn't affect the button physically so these are the differences first you can add a dead zone for input second it won't add a physical lock on the output you can actually set it any way you like but where could it be helpful release let's say you play a shooter game like call of duty even if you turn trigger effect off which adds a realistic dead zone for weapons when it's on when you want to shoot rapidly you need to release the button to a point then push it again so you can go for the second shot if the zone change isn't much it won't actually shoot the second time now if you use the physical limiter or the softer limiter you have less zone so you can shoot faster and more rapidly because you don't need to go all the way up to reach zone zero and shoot again you go a little and bam you're ready for the next shot it works very well for pistols and weapons that need to go to the zero input and then they shoot a second round. There are ways to cheat by some settings that I tested in Overwatch 2 and I never thought it could be possible. For example, for Cassidy, if you hold R2, it'll automatically shoot one after one. Regardless of holding or pushing, the speed is the same. But with some custom settings and timing, I could shoot two rounds very fast. I didn't do it in the real match as I may get banned, but I'm telling you it's possible. Just have a look at the normal speed of shooting here. Now this is what I did for two bullets. As you saw it was much faster. I won't show you my settings right now because you may get banned. 
I should test them first and then I release videos for them and you can use them on your own risk. The next part is customizing buttons and back buttons. You can customize many buttons here. For the back button, I usually have it either on X and O for jump and crouch because I want to keep my right thumb on the stick all the time. Or in a game like Call of Duty, I may go with a square and circle. In Overwatch, depending on the characters and abilities, I have different profiles for them. By the way, I found this module easier to use as I have my fingers on R R1, R2, and L1, L2 simultaneously. The next option is stick sensitivity dead zone. Here you can have custom curves to have different responses instead of linear ones. Some games like Call of Duty and Overwatch 2 already have customizable curves like dynamic in Call of Duty or dual zone exponential ramp. Suppose you want to use this option and want it to act as you test it here, make sure to keep in game settings on linear because the linear will reflect anything you see here. In that case, if you change it there and here, it will be combined and you need to test to see if it works for you. I will make videos of my favorite curves and settings in future for different games. With curve adjustment, you can adjust it further. With dead zone, you can add how much of the stick should not be considered as the input. Usually you need to keep it on zero to have the highest zone for movement. Nothing happens on 30% as you see for this much of movement. I don't recommend it unless you have stick drift issues where your camera or character moves without touching the sticks. About vibration, I usually prefer to keep it off for shooter games for more control over recoil. But I do it in the game because I want it for story games. You can adjust the trigger effect intensity as well, feedback and switching. If you have the bike controller indicator on, switching a profile will show it with the LEDs on the touchpad. Profile 1, 2, 3, 4. If you have the option by controller vibration on, it will vibrate the controller when you change the profiles. You will receive notification for switching profiles and changes. If they bother you in the games, you can turn them off from here. Function menu would show a menu when you hold either of the FN buttons. You can change displayed content for all info just to show profiles or only selected profile. It has some delay when you hold it until the menu pops up to prevent accidental presses, but you can change profiles even before it shows up. If you hold it, it will show up. If you know how it works, you can turn it completely off. The brightness of controller indicators. Maybe it has a minimal effect on battery life. It's not noticeable. You can change it if you like. Is DualSense Edge unfair compared to DualSense players? Yes. The zone changer in L2 and R2. It could be implanted into the normal controller by software. We have software on PC that does it. I know it can't be saved, but you should be able to use it when it's connected to your PS5. The same with the stickers. These options should be available for ordinary DualSense 2. But the most unfair advantage is the physical zone changer in R2. They can shoot faster, they can't customize it to do rapid fire. I haven't seen people doing this yet but soon they will because I will show them how. But for the games like Call of Duty that need a release to 0, you can change the R2 to R1. By that, R1 is like 0 and 1. So you can press it faster for shooting in the war zone, but again, rapid shooting is only possible with zones as you saw in Overwatch 2. Does it worth $200? Maybe. The fact that you can change the sticks instead of the whole controller is a good point. In the following video that I will put it here, I will show you more secret tips and tricks to get the most out of your dual edge so don't forget to subscribe for now so you won't miss the next video thanks a lot for watching